Hello everyone, this is Daniel Fergus from the Dynamic Media Lab and today I'm going to be going over the basics of how to set up a project in Final Cut Pro. One of the first things you're going to want to do when you're set up a project is create a new folder. So let's go ahead and do that on local storage. You can, if you have an account, make a new folder on the DMLXN. If you're interested in having your own private space for media projects, you can go ahead and talk to me about that and we might be able to get you set up. For the most part, most of you won't have one though, so let's go to local storage and let's go to new folder and name the folder something that will relate to your project that you're going to be working on. I'm just going to go Final Cut Pro Setup. And once that's created, I'm going to click out of here and now go to Final Cut Pro. And I'll show you in a minute why we made the folder, but what we're going to do here is capture from a mini DV tape. If you have a hard drive based camera, it's going to be a little bit different. So take that in consideration. One of the first things that you'll want to do, whether you're capturing on a mini DV or a hard drive based, is save your project. And let's go ahead and save it in that folder that we created earlier. And I'm going to, it's just going to name the project the same name as the folder. And also the next thing we want to do is set where the files are going to be captured to from our tape. So I'm going to go to System Settings. And this is an important step. If you don't set this, your files can be going just about anywhere on the computer, wherever it is that Final Cut is set to put your footage. You want to have full control over this. So let's go ahead and set it to the folder that we created earlier. Let's go to Local Storage. Final Cut Setup, and set these settings below as well. Final Cut Setup, Final Cut. Okay, once these are all set, we know that all the files are being saved to that folder along with your project. What a lot of people don't realize is that when you're capturing to Final Cut, it's not actually saving the files within the project itself. It's saving it somewhere on the computer. And so you want to have control of where it's going to make sure you have permission to where the files are being written along with if you need to move the files at a different time, you'll be able to just grab them all at once from a folder and you'll save yourself a lot of heartache later. So once you have the project saved and all your capture settings saved to that folder, you are ready to log and capture. So let's just go to Log and Capture, and it looks like we're ready to go. Most of these computers should be imaged as a digital video input on the capture device. So it should be able to recognize your device or your camera, whatever it is that you have the tape playing off of right off the bat. And you can see here I hit, put, hit play, and I have control of the device. I'm going to go ahead and click out of here, though. Just as an example, if I didn't have control of the device for whatever reason, you can go up to Final Cut Pro Easy Setup and change the format to NTSC and use Digital Video NTSC Firewire Basic as the um, preset for your project. If you hit Setup there, that should get you where you need to be to go to Log and Capture and have control of your deck or your video camera, whatever you're playing the video from. So I'm going to hit Play now. And you see I do have control. So I'm going to hit stop at this point. And before you capture anything, it's a good idea to name the clip that you're about to capture. Give it, give it a descriptive title. And where you do that is not under name, it's actually under description. So it's a little deceiving, but um, that's just where Final Cut has you do it. So let's go to description and type in Mike Walkup. As I'm walking up to Mike, it'll just give you a good idea of what it is that the footage is based on if you're just looking at the titles of the file instead of little thumbnails. This will give you a better reference if you're searching through footage. Real name, this is good if you have a number of different tapes. You might have a tape named uh, Day 5... Uh, and the name of a location wherever you shot. Basically, it's just a descriptive term so that you know where the footage came from. So let's go ahead and go to tape one. And this is really more handy when you go into a little bit more advanced editing 
and you do batch capture. And I can show you that in a different tutorial, for our purpose, we're just going to do a capture now, which is a kind of a brute force straight capture. So once these are set, you can just go ahead and hit play, hit capture now. And the capture window will pop up and you are capturing to the computer. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop right now. And that's just by hitting escape on the Mac and that at this point you can see there's a file that pops up in our project bin off to the left. And that means that it's captured and everything is good. If you want to capture another clip you can go right ahead and press play. Go ahead and hit capture now again and we have a second clip coming. I'm going to hit escape and now you can see I have two clips. And by default, it will put a little number after the name if you don't rename the clip. I probably should have renamed it up here before I hit Captured Now. But for the most part, for our purpose, this will work. So once you have all the footage captured that you need, you can click out of here. One thing I do want to mention, though, when you're capturing, it's a good idea to capture a little bit before and a little bit after of the actual clip that you think you're going to use in your edit. It's easier to extend and shorten in the edit process than it is to recapture all the footage again. So make sure you get what you need. So at this point I'm going to click out of the window and you can see we have two clips here. I'm going to click on the first or actually the second one. Go through the preview pane. You can scrub through with the little timeline. Hit spacebar to play if you want to see it play back in real time. If you don't want to bring the whole clip down into a sequence, we don't have a big clip here, but you can see right now, I just brought the whole clip in. If you only want to bring a little section, you can change that by hitting I for in, O for out, and then that will just bring a little bit of, of the clip down onto your timeline. So that's just a easier way to get footage down from the preview pane down to the timeline without having to have big huge files that you need to mess with. Well, hopefully this tutorial was helpful in setting up a project. If you have any questions, you can email me at dfergus at unr.edu. And with that, happy editing.